one one of the pushbacks I get when uh, trying to uh, um, convince people of uh, the benefit of green light in the spectrum is then um, why would growers have done in the past and I think still do use green lamps in the grow room during dark cycles and um, is it is it the right thing to do and does it work you know or do, do, will they actually be interrupting the light cycle of the uh, plants mm -hmm. Did have you read our paper on that? <laughs> That's why you're asking. So we did some, especially with cannabis, um, some studies on how dark is dark, and it needs to be dark at night. <clears throat> and you can ask this exact same question for people: What if you have light pollution at night, and some people can't sleep if there's a tiny light on? And it turns out cannabis is in the category it cannot sleep if there's a tiny light on. Well, how tiny can that light be? Um, so we get down to the nanomolar region now, not micromoles, but a thousand fold less. <clears throat> and it turns out that many lines of cannabis are affected by only 10 nanomoles of photons. Wow. Um, now our, our eyes can see that, it's, it's light leaks, but Apogee Instruments sells a light pollution detector now to to detect those trace levels of light, especially for cannabis. Okay. Um, so along those lines, we also tested blue, green, and red light pollution. And because green penetrates leaves better, green is not a good safe light. Okay. <laughs> the, the, okay. The, the, the green photons triggered light responses in, in cannabis. They would in other plants too. Yeah. Now, Having said that, first of all, green is not completely safe, but our eyes see green, green photons so well that you can work, say, with five nanomoles of green and you still can see the plants. So it's still a light of choice, but it should be used with great caution at night.